New Year. Happy 2024. I'm your host, DC, the legend of awesomeness, of course. Welcome to episode 15 of the Men's Conference Podcast. Wow, we have reached a really big milestone, guys. And of course, I have two of my two musketeers in the building. That is Lars and that ranting guy. And not forgetting is that today's episode is actually brought to you by Bongo Bongo. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure to click the link in the below in the description below and get to play some awesome games like Aviator and Candy Crush and get you win yourself some cash money prizes. So if you want to watch out for awesome, you know, cash prizes or any prizes, just get to visit Bongo Bongo. It's Facebook page that is Bongo Bongo Zambia. It's as easy as that. So as usual, I am joined by Lars and that ranting guy. I hope you guys are actually awesome and amazing. And today we have a special guest and his name is Doc Brown. How you? First international guest, eh? Yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm definitely excited. You know, I am happy. I have so many questions. Me too. Same, same here. here. Same I same hope here. we have enough time. Yeah. And I won't overwhelm him. Yeah. But yeah, we do. But before Welcome. we actually get into it. Thank you. Thank oh. you very much. Uh, how are you sorry. guys doing? Lars and uh, that ranting guy. Uh, <sighs> You, you can answer first. Oh, uh, yeah. The week is pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. Work, rain, yeah. and work. Yeah. And uh, looking forward to this episode. There's not much. I, I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm having a blast. Yeah. It, it's been a boring week, but uh, we see how it ends. Yeah. But I'm okay. Lars? I'm okay. I'm doing fine. Just same, uh, same mindset as always, you know, uh, make enough money. You know, make sure I go towards my goals. Mm -hmm. Make sure I don't slack off. Like, uh, you know, make sure that. You know, just do better. Keep doing better. That's just my mindset now. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. First international guest, Doc Brown. How's everything going? Welcome to Zambia. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, things are going pretty good. I'm, I'm not getting enough African food, but yeah. <laughs> um, we'll deal with that a little bit later. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. But other than that, everything's mm -hmm. fine. I'm everything's enjoying fine. My, my stay here, yeah. and thank you guys for having me. Mm -hmm. You uh, are welcome. Can, yeah. Welcome to the motherland. I don't know if that's fine to say that. I mean, I mean, it's, it's good. It's good. Yeah, you yeah. can, you can yeah. say that. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but I would definitely love to know, you know, how's uh, how's been your stay here so far? Yeah, you know, I, I've been quite busy, but um, I'm mm -hmm. enjoying myself. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a privilege to be here in Zambia. Mm -hmm. The, the motherland, it's yeah. okay to say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's good. The cradle of civilization. Mm -hmm. This is where it all began yes. for, for me, my, my, my history, my ancestors. Uh, they all came from this continent. So it's mm -hmm. a privilege for me to be here on, mm -hmm. um, in the motherland. Okay. So is would this would this be your first time here? Um, this okay. is the first time um, for me. Mm -hmm. uh, visiting the continent, mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to um, coming back. I got a couple of trips already mm -hmm. uh, planned, so I will be back. Mm -hmm. You will be back. I will be back. So, how long are you are you, are you here? <laughs> um, I'll be here until mid month. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So, well, I, still I, enough time for that African food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but how's yeah. the Af African food so far? <clears throat> um, it, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm looking to try a little bit more of a variety. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I'm I'm excited about it. Okay. Have you have you tried our staple food in Shima? <laughs> yes, I have. Okay. You have. I have. Yeah. I, I, I've tried it. Uh -huh. so, um, Scale of one to ten. Yeah. The, the Shima, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, um, it has a lot of carbohydrates, so right. I don't eat a lot of carbs. So <laughs> yeah. I give it a I give it a five. Okay. But the the rape. Yeah, um, I, and the pumpkin leaves. Yeah, those I enjoy those pretty good. Those uh -huh. those are my favorites so far. Okay. Have you tried uh, Chihuahua? <laughs> yes. That's the pumpkin. You have. Leaves. Oh, okay. pumpkin. <laughs> what? How did you forget? I, I I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I'm, well, I'm just used, you know, with the Chihuahua name. Well, you know? well, we, I'm glad that uh, you're having a great time here, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm happy mm -hmm. to have you here. Our first international guest mm -hmm. from thousands of what nine thousand miles away. Yeah, if I'm I know, not yeah. mistaken, that's that's pretty far. It was a from long home. trip. It, it was, was a very long trip. Mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, I've heard people fly. It's what two day trip. You just yeah, on. It took me two days to arrive here. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. two days. Okay. Uh, wow. Okay. Amazing. I think that's something that I'm yet to experience, mm -hmm. but uh, the. But getting into it, mm -hmm. um, I read about you. I'm very much, very much uh, 
uh, impressed and I am excited uh, simply because I've always told myself, when I go to the U.S., Florida, Miami, I just want to see the beaches and the palm trees swaying. And th that was just my dream. Yeah. Now, then I heard you are from there. And I was like, yeah, I can get some questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, read about you grew up in a small town in uh, Florida. And yes, uh, yes. maybe you could tell me, you could tell us a, a little bit about that before we, we, we get into it. Yeah. Well, I grew up in a small town. It was a very close knit family. Okay. Um, Everyone knew everyone. Mm. So if someone did something wrong, the entire town would know oh. it by the end of the day. Mm. So uh, very humble mm. uh, beginning for me. Um, I grew up, uh, my parents were uh, Christians. I was raised in a Christian home. They were very strict. You know, we had a lot of rules. Um, but, you know, we had some freedom as well. Mm -hmm. um, but my father was strong and his discipline is one of the reasons that I'm here today and that I'm successful in uh, most of the ventures that I, uh, I partake in. So uh, I thank God for my father and my mother. Uh, my mother, you know, she loved me so, and my, my father would not let me go. So wow. that was, I was blessed from the beginning to have parents like that. And mm -hmm. um, I have two uh, siblings. I have a brother and a sister, and they are the best siblings in the world so mm -hmm. i love them very deeply that's that's fantastic so it's so compared to like uh how your hometown was back then compared to now like is there any difference i know that oh yes there's a big difference in my community now so the community as a whole um has been falling apart at the scene um crime has gone up um especially in the terms of violence um it was a Christian-based community where pretty much everybody attended church of some sort. Uh, we had good uh, moral values in that community, and that has been dissipating for the past 25 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just shows how uh, <clears throat> life was different back then yeah. Yeah. compared to now. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. But, but it seems like it's a it's an everywhere problem these yeah. days. Yeah, mm -hmm. but in your in your opinion, like, why do you think why, why do you think is the cause of that? Like, what's causing so much you know rise in violence and crime and all that? Well, um, we uh, assimilated into what I call a moral cesspool uh, when we uh, were integrated into the American culture. And what I mean by that, it was there was segregation. Um, blacks couldn't participate um, in the same school as whites. Um, we were separate in churches, and everything was separate. I remember there was a movie theater in my hometown, and I remember going to the movie theater as a young boy, and the blacks had to sit up top in the balcony, and the whites sat down on the floor. So um, one good thing about that, we had our own schools, so we were... Uh, morally strong, we were, we were a strong community. And when um, desegregation happened and we integrated into the American culture, the American society, we integrated into a, a, a moral cesspool. And then things began to happen just slowly. We, we started deterior, deteriorating as a community. And there's a number of reasons for that. Um, one being um, entertainment. Mm -hmm. mm. So um, the more we connected and held on to the entertainment industry, uh, the more uh, negative values and negative behavior I began to see in my community. Not just my communi community, but the community abroad in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's something that, you, uh, that we read on your bio. You were, you were a law enforcement officer? Y yes. Yeah. So... How's that, how's that going for, like, for you? Um, you I'm you in the process of uh, setting myself up to retire. So I'm at the end of the journey ah, as far okay. as that concerns. Okay. That's, that's, yeah. so, so I'll be retiring and I'll be probably moving somewhere here in ah, Africa. Okay. Okay. So, okay. okay. Hopefully it's cool. Zambia. Yeah. That'll be cool. Yeah. Okay. So uh, basically, you, while you're traveling, you're just exploring your options right now. Um, yes. Initially, I was uh, set to go to Senegal. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Senegal. Wow. Yes. So um, through my connection with Set Apart, I mm -hmm. ended up coming to Zambia. I was, um, I was asked to come here, and I actually promised 
um, the set apart uh, group that I would come to Zambia. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if I would have t taken the trip to Senegal, it would have been kind of difficult for me to get to Zambia. So I just yeah, right. changed my plans and, I, and I'm here in Zambia now. So what actually... Large continent. Yeah. <laughs> what You've actually, got lots of places to yeah. Yeah. So what actually motivated you into getting into the law enforcement? Uh, mm -hmm. um, when I was growing up, I hated to see innocent people uh, get abused or get taken advantage of. So mm -hmm. I always wanted to do something about that. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the ways that I could make that possible was was uh, becoming a law enforcement officer. Mm -hmm. And I could help my community mm -hmm. uh, and help, you know, my community. If I, you know, it's something to want change, but it's something to get up and make change happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was my way of making change happen in my community. Yeah. Uh, I put boots on the ground and um, mm -hmm. I got up every day and uh, I remember having some clashes with some of the drug dealers, but mm -hmm. um, overall uh, mm -hmm. my influence uh, prevailed over them in that situation. Mm -hmm. mm. And that's, that's a good point because uh, <clears throat> most people when they talk about you know, trying to implement change. They just talk. They don't do anything about exactly. it. Exactly. And yeah, so I think that was the right choice. Like, if you want to see change, you make sure you are the change. It yeah. starts, right. starts with you. It starts, starts with, with you. you. Yeah. That's, you know? that's interesting. But before we jump into our topic, I uh, uh, I read that you, you played uh, football. To the Zambians, American football is what you will call it. You played uh, football uh, in college as well. Yes. As well, S Super Bowl uh, heavyweight, uh, uh, but I know Super Bowl is a large thing in America, but the heavyweight, that's why I'm confused. Uh, what, I, talking I, about the heavyweight on my bio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Th that yeah. was, uh, I was a boxer. A oh. boxer? Yeah, okay. so I was in the, uh, it was called the Super Heavyweight Division. Okay, okay. So I was a boxer. So actually, I was playing football, college football, and I was boxing at the same time. So, mm -hmm. so that became, that was very difficult because, you know, I would get up, go to class, go to football practice, and then I would run three miles to the gym, train in the gym, <laughs> run back to the, to the dormitory and try to do homework. Mm -hmm. And it became a little overwhelming, so I had to let one go. And um, boxing, which was what I love to do, uh, but football kept me in college so oh, okay. so i chose football so i can um, graduate from college okay, okay. So, but how long did you did you get into boxing how long was it? i did boxing um, probably a, about 4 years 4 years yes ah okay did you train a, anyone did i train anyone yeah no i didn't train anyone but um i competed and mm -hmm. i was uh extremely good especially for the the limited amount of time that I was involved in the yeah. sport. Um, but it just, the, they, the two sports conflicted. One was yeah. keeping me in college and the yeah. other was, you know, um, it was just something that I loved doing. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Amazing. Uh, Amazing. College football. Yeah. I've, I've seen, uh, I think I've watched a, a game or two. They're pretty long. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> it's like every 10 seconds, time out. I'm like, ah. Uh, how long are we going to time out? <laughs> you know, with, with our football here, we wait just half time, you know. 15 minutes break, everybody gets back to action. But I was like, you know, let me just tune into the NFL. I, three hours <laughs> a game. I'm like, whoo, this is really long. But uh, I think I, I, would, uh, I would enjoy it the more. I, I, I stick to it. I still need to learn the rules. There's, there's a lot involved in it. Yeah. Something that I have to rethink everything somehow, but uh, it's an interesting sport. Uh, I hope to one day throw. Uh, it's called a ball, is it? You call it a ball? Football. It's a football. It's, it's a football. It's okay. Football. okay. We use you use hands, but okay, we'll, we'll leave that uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that <laughs> argument for, yeah. for next time. So, so yeah, I, I mean, I think this is the time we we we, we could jump to, in the yeah, in the, yeah. in the topic. So, I believe. Very, so, very serious yeah. thing to talk about. So your bio actually inspired this topic. Yeah. yeah. It says that you're fighting uh, addiction. You're fighting um, men who are, or young boys who are actually addicted to pornography, drugs, and, you know, alcohol. So that is... Gang, that viol gun gang violence. Gang violence, so on and so know? forth. So that's what has, you know, inspired the topic for today is how to overcome addiction. You know, all sorts of addiction. What steps should men take and what 
And how do those men, young boys, get into that? And then we can, you know, jump into now the preventation, the prevent. Yeah. Okay. Like, like in the Western world, yeah. uh, okay, y- 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 uh, I understand things could be similar, but here maybe they'll be a little bit different, different from yeah. Yeah. how it is uh, in the US. What, what do you think makes young men and women uh, get into these bad vices oh, like in the US? Okay, first of all, um, it's a learned behavior. So mm-hmm. you don't, you're not born and you decide that you want to get high. Yeah. So it's a learned behavior. Um, and it's something that people do to fit in, mm-hmm. um, to feel cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, to be part of the in crowd. So uh, it's, it's a behavior that's really influenced by outside sources. Unless, you know, there they, they could also be uh, people that have uh, drug addiction issues in their family. Mm-hmm. But it's a learned behavior. And most of the young people um, either saw someone in their family mm-hmm. abusing drugs mm-hmm. or they get it from the entertainment industry. Mm-hmm. So like, like, like rappers, mm-hmm. uh, rappers talk about getting high all the time. Yeah, yeah. that's true. And so yeah. they've made it, made it popular. Yeah. To get high, it, almost like a lifestyle. And you know, and you know what's funny is that uh, there's even a possibility that's just for show, and they don't actually even do it behind the scenes. I don't know if that's maybe a thing. Well, what happens in the music industry? Um, many of the rappers are they don't live the lifestyle that they sing in their music. Yeah. So uh, it's you know like some of them appear to be gangsters but they were mm-hmm. actually studio gangsters yeah mm. they they are actually intelligent i had a conversation with one rapper he's a real popular rapper and he speaks like three languages graduate from college real intelligent guy mm-hmm. but when you see him on the screen he he completely portrays, different person yeah he's a completely different person but mm-hmm. he he's actually not that's not who he is yeah. um so these guys seem about music I mean, they sing about drugs. They sing about a number of things that's actually bad, and 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 these things all affect our community. Yeah. And no, one way I can tell, I just look at the social media uh, in Zambia, mm-hmm. and I'm watching these young people, and and as soon as I see it, I said they're they're affected by what they're watching and what they're seeing and what they're hearing. Yeah. So, if I can control the music that all you guys listen to. Mm-hmm. If I can control that that music, I can manipulate all you guys mm-hmm. and I can direct you guys down a path that you might not normally go mm-hmm. had you not uh, opened yourself up to the music. Because mm-hmm. music is powerful. Yeah. yeah, it is. So music can change your consciousness without you giving it permission. Yeah, It can change, it's, it's spiritual in nature um, and we have to protect our youth from entertainment. Mm -hmm. See, we give our children these cell phones, this little computer in their hand, Mm -hmm. and they have access to all sorts of uh, perversion is what it is. Perversion. Getting high is perversion. Yeah. It's perversion. You know, it it, it reminds me of what my mom says. Uh, she, She said, you see, back in the day, we used to go look for trouble. It it was really hard to look for trouble, okay? Mm -hmm. You would just sit at home with Mm -hmm. your friends. But, the kids these days, you don't even need to look for trouble. No. It will find you right there on your phone. Yeah. Boom. Your phone. You know, so that's the difference in, in um, I, I would say, in generations. And uh, like mm. the entertainment has, I, I, I don't know if I, I don't know if it's okay to even say it's done more harm done than good. Because I don't see the goodness of it, except maybe the guy making a lot of money out of uh, misleading uh, the, the, the youths and mm-hmm. like you said in Zambia uh, I, I don't know if it's an African issue but here in Zambia it's we've been influenced by Western media a mm-hmm. lot mm-hmm. it's what we've consumed and when you turn on the TV majority of the TV stations we've been subscribed to ever since we we're young we're all Western you mm-hmm. know Cartoon mm-hmm. Network, so on and so forth, Disney and MTV. We had all, everything, mm-hmm. you know. So now we're at a time where people want to emulate what's mm-hmm. happening because, hey, that this is how uh, a certain rapper we will not mention did mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. and this is how I'll do it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's quite sad, but uh, it's what 
I, I spoke about uh, the, the drug before we started uh, that was uh, lean, you know. It, it never, I don't remember anyone doing lean in Zambia until one, that one rapper who was very addicted to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. From 2008, he, he made lots of songs and everybody was like, what is it? People went to Google what it's made of and they were like, oh, oh. so I just have to run to the nearest pharmacy and Collect buy the that. ingredients if you can call them that. And it became a problem at some point. Uh, it's, it's a really, it's a, it's a big battle to fight, yeah. you know, in, in our yes. time. We need your generation. We need help. Even though we look like we have it figured out, we haven't figured out anything. You know that, it's, right? it's, it's, it's a sad situation. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the thing is that the sad thing is that there are lots of young men out there that have been ruined by social media, saying this is how you should behave yeah. uh, in order to get this type of lady, in order to be this kind of man. This is, this is a, these are the people that you need to follow. Yeah. And that is really sad to see, you know, uh, social media actually destroy young men out there, you know. And besides, we're living in an attention-based society and people yeah. are willing to do whatever it takes just to get the attention they need. Exactly, you know, and which is, which is, which is sad, you know. So you, you're seeing guys, you know, being alcoholics, destroying their lives. You're seeing guys sleeping with multiple women thinking that's cool. Yeah. You know, you're seeing guys out there that are addicted to pornography, which is sad. You know, they're out there. There's this one guy that I uh, met um, he's at a certain school, uh, college that I will not mention. Do I know him? So, no, you don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. He, he was just some guy just met on that very same day. So he sees me, he says, Yo, welcome back. So I was like, ah, Yo, I'm, I'm good. And how are you? Ah, I'm good. I'm good. Um, and, I'm, and this guy was young, you know? So he's high, like he's extremely high. And I'm like, Yo, where are you from? He says, Ah, right now I'm just from studying. So, Right now, I just want to go and smoke. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna take some alcohol. And I'm like, but bro, you already look high. Why are you doing this to yourself? Ah, life is hard. And I'm like, no, you're not supposed to be in this situation, bro. This is why you're acting like this. And this dude was, he looked like he hadn't eaten for 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 for, for a day. Like it was really sad. To I see hear appetite. It, uh, yeah, uh, addicts have a appetite issue. Yeah, yeah, and he, he prioritized, you know alcohol and all these uh, pleasures over, over bettering himself. So I asked him a couple of questions. I'm like, okay, what are you studying? He says, no, I'm studying law. I'm like, cool, you're studying law. Wow. I know, right? Somebody <laughs> who's going to be dealing with the law. And yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's funny. Yeah, so I was yeah. like, if you're studying law, aren't you supposed to be taking care of your health? Ah, no, some of these things, you know, we need to, we need to stress, uh, there's too much stress on my life, so we, I need to take these mm. things. I'm like, no, 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 no. You're not supposed to be doing that. So after some time, you know, he failed to budge and just decided to go his go He his doesn't way. even go to school anymore, does he? I don't know. I haven't seen him for and, like and who a knows? Year. Maybe he was even just influenced into choosing that uh, career path. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it wasn't even his choice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Doc Brown, uh, I, um, do, do you think um, our generation, with what you've seen so far, uh, being much older than us, do you think there's a future for us or... We are just damned to, to failure at this point because our older generations here, you know, they don't help us as much. They just say, oh, no, you, this, this modern generation is very lazy. They don't do anything. All they do is sit on social media and get drunk. That's all they do. Mm -hmm. So, but in your perspective, what do you think, where do you think we're headed? Um, you're headed down a, a dark road so, if this... If this continues, you hurt, you're headed down a dark road. And for the older generation, it's the older generation's fault. So how do these kids get these cell phones? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. How do these kids have access to the information that they have on the cell phone? No blocks, no nothing on the cell phone. Yeah. How can they access porn, um, these, uh, this music with explicit lyrics? Mm -hmm. It was provided by an adult. Mm -hmm. true. So... Each generation is responsible for reaching back and pulling the people behind them up. And if that doesn't happen, if you don't be, if uh, the generations that um, mature don't reach back and pull generations up and assist them, those generations are going to be lost. Mm -hmm. So each generation 
gets worse and worse. So you go to your, 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 your look at your grandparents. They didn't do things that your parents did. Yeah, that's true. And then the generation behind them, they didn't do things that their parents did. And so it gets worse and worse. And not just the parents are responsible, but um, the, the Zambian community and society is responsible mm -hmm. as well. And, and if no one does anything, then the, the uh, generation behind us is lost. Mm -hmm. They're completely lost. So they are actually being destroyed before they <clears throat> even get a chance to determine what they want to do in life. Yeah. Because they're exposed to all of this wickedness. Um, and then our culture, this is, this is one thing that bothers me. We don't value maturity. We value adolescence. We value adolescence and mm -hmm. we encourage adolescent behavior from our young people. Mm -hmm. We don't push maturity. And let me give you a couple of examples. I'm gonna use the Bible as a reference. So yeah. uh, uh, King Saul, he became king at what age? He was about, uh, I think it was uh, 12, a yeah, teen? T t yeah, he, he was, it's before he was a teenager. Yes. Yeah. Uh, king Josiah, you find him in First and Second Kings. First, first Kings, uh, King Josiah was 10 years old. 10 years old. What, how, how old was Samuel when um, God began to use him? And so uh, in the Hebraic culture, Hebraic community, me and one of the, uh, the gentlemen was speaking about um, the history of the Bantu people, but I won't get into that. But um, y'all have a, a rich history over here. But, yeah, um, very true. So uh, in, the, um, in the Hebrew community, uh, you became a man at 14 and you had your bar mitzvah. You became a man at 14. Um, so back then, they valued maturity. Mm -hmm. We don't value maturity and we don't push maturity. Mm -hmm. So it's adolescent. Uh, typ typically, they say you're an adult at 18. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the way we uh, pamper our young people, mm -hmm. um, many of them are not mature until they get about 25 to 28. They still have adolescent behavior. Mm -hmm. So as a culture, as a community, the Zambian community need to value maturity. Mm -hmm. And we need to treat our children and our young people um, in a certain way that's going to promote uh, maturity in our communities. Mm -hmm. Instead, of we got a, a bunch of young kids, a bunch of young males, 18, 19-year-olds, that are uh, they're soft, mm -hmm. to, to put it simply. They're soft. Yeah. The, I call it the cupcake generation. Yeah. <laughs> so nice they, they get offended about anything. Yeah. Um, the parents pamper them. Yeah. Um, it, it's so many uh, elements working against the young people today that they really need our help. Not mm -hmm. only that, you got the school system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. What 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 the school promote? They promote values that lead us away from the 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 godly values that many of us was raised on. Mm -hmm. So public schools, um, what happened in America, the public schools are, are, are teaching. Um, like when I was raised, there was a story, uh, Jack and Jill, there was a book called Jack and Jill. Jack oh, and Jill yeah. went up the hill yeah. to fetch a pail of water. Yeah. So now it's Jack and Bill went up the hill. <laughs> so our schools are influencing our young people. You got entertainment influencing our young people. Mm -hmm. And then we got parents that are babying the young people and not holding them accountable yeah. and not promoting maturity. Yeah. So basically, like, it all starts from the household, right? It, it starts from the house. So the, the parents is the first stop. Charity begins at yeah. home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah because it, I've seen a lot of uh, parents whereby in order to keep their kid busy, no matter how young they could be, like, three, four, five, they give them, the device. First thing, it's television. Exactly. exactly. Television. Distract yeah. them. In front of that. Distract thing. them. You know, because I remember back then is our father used to be hard on us. He would always, when he sees us watching TV, he would definitely <laughs> it was get upset. to watch TV yeah, exactly. with your parents he would, around. He would get upset, you know. <laughs> he would tell us, no, you need to read your books, you know. Oh, we need to do this. And especially my grandfather, my grandfather valued money work. Mm -hmm. He did not love the Oh, you're comfortable seated at home and yeah. all that stuff. Get a gardener. He, exactly. He did, there was a gardener, but yeah. he just said, no, these boys will be, will be useless when they become older. Yeah. You know, I, I need to teach these boys, you know. And, and that's one thing that we, that 
this generation is definitely lacking. You know, like you said, the cupcake generation, you know, they are, they are so fragile on everything. They complain about everything, which is extremely annoying. Like, dude, you do not know what our grandparents went through, what our parents went through. Like, this is the reason why, you know, I would, maybe if I'm getting it wrong, uh, that's the reason why most men back then never committed suicide. You know, it was less. It, it was, was less, less, you know. But now it's extremely high. There's this 19 year old guy who say, "No, my relationship ended, so I feel like taking my own life." I'm like, dude, 19 years old. You are extremely young, you know, which is extremely, extremely sad, you know. Yeah, the, and the, the music industry also has a spiritual effect on them. So they, they suicide is definitely something that, that comes from Satan. Yeah. And I believe a lot of these uh, attitudes and behavior is picked up from the music. But I did want to say something to the parents. Because mm -hmm. the, the parents are at fault for a lot yeah. of this. Yeah. We, we, we can't pass, pass the blame yeah. on the everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. They're the first line of defense. And to all the parents out there, under the sound of my voice, um, you are failing your children. If you don't discipline your child, you don't love your child. Very true. Uh, I thank God for my father who disciplined me. And parents, you are going to be held accountable. God is going to hold you accountable for not raising them in the way that they should go. We, 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 um, we need strong parents, mm -hmm. and that's the first line. Mm -hmm. They don't need these cell phones. They don't need the television because mm -hmm. it all leads them away from those values that we cherish so much as, as we were growing up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the most, uh, the most irritating thing I hate is when, as a parent, as the child gets older, they start displaying certain attitudes and behaviors that are like disrespectful, or maybe they start indulging in activities. Then she's asking herself, this child How is useless. You... How? But like, I, you should... But what happened? Exactly. Where did I go wrong? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm, exactly. They always, <laughs> they always try to like... Yeah. Escape, uh, escape. Uh, what do you call it? What's the term I'm looking for? Um, take accountability. accountability yeah, yeah. yeah, they're always trying to just blame everything on the child. No, it's mm. your fault. He's stupid. He's what? But they don't want to take accountability yeah, it's, it's, for their yeah. actions. It's the thing I was saying. Uh, notice. Let's let's look at it uh, down this way. Uh, how our Zambian politicians be bashing us all the time when we're not close to elections. By the way, you know when we're. Close to elections, oh, we have to look forward, uh, we have to work with the youths, you know, the youths are the future, they sing all these songs, right? Then when the elections are gone, they are still in office, they go, oh, all you do is spend time on social media. Right. All you do is go to the clubs every weekend, that's all youths know. It's uh, indulging in alcohol and so on and so forth. Yeah, but... Who raised us, though? Exactly. You know, and then when you ask them, like, okay, give me a job, give me, give me work. They want to retire at sixty-five. You know, then when am I? When am I going to get a job? Mm -hmm. I'm thirty and I'm there. Oh, the youths are unemployed. Yeah, that's because we have sixty, seventy, and eighty-year-olds still in office, mm -hmm. and then they blame us for not doing anything. Mm -hmm. And the the, the, the youths with, a, I would say, with not a proper bringing, mm -hmm. with, a, with a foundation built on sand, there's no jobs, there's nothing to do. What do I do? Mm -hmm. yeah. They just start now doing drugs and this is what's happening. Today I heard of a new drug called Bluetooth. I didn't even know what that <laughs> is. <laughs> what? You know, but at the end of the day, you're right, uh, Doc, uh, Doc, uh, Doc Brown, you're right. Uh, our elders they've just kind of let us go, you know? They've kind of let us go. I, I was privileged to, to uh, never, I was never born in a, I was never raised in a uh, both parents' household, but my mom was, and what my mom did is, she, she just gave me what she called uh, freedom on a leash, you know? She, yes. she just gave me that, like, look, you can do, you can go play with your friends, but my mom always wanted to know, who are my friends? Where are they from? What house do those friends have parents? What do their parents do? You know, mm -hmm. my mom needed to know everything. There was this one time a friend of mine gave me a, uh, that was a, a PSP, you know, PlayStation, the, the portable one, PSP. Walked in the house with it. Mom noticed like, where did you get that? I'm like, a friend 
of mine gave it to me. Then my mom is like, okay, so let me get this straight. Your friend gave you that device, which cost how much? Um, like by that time it was like 10,000 kwacha, Zambian currency. Okay. So where did your friend get the 10,000? I was like, I'm sure the parents, okay, so did the parents give that toy to you? Hmm. Uh, no, take it back. You know, it, it was <laughs> take it back. So I had to just, and you know, when you're young, uh, I wanted to play this game. You know? yeah. She can't let me do anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you take it back. But it's now that I've realized that she had to, because she said, look, I don't want you bringing stuff in my house because next thing you start to steal. Yeah. Okay. True. You you envy your neighbors have s- such and such and you'll be like, oh, mm-hmm. since mom didn't get me that, maybe I should find other ways to mm-hmm. get it for myself. Mm-hmm. So um, my mom was very strict. Uh, she, she stopped hitting me when I was, I think, in ninth grade. She still used to knock me on my head from time to time. Um, otherwise, I'm, I'm thankful. Just like you said, you are thankful on how you were raised. I'm really thankful mm-hmm. on how my mom uh, raised me. Mm-hmm. I don't see this with the with the younger generation. No. Uh, they're letting them do whatever no. they want. Exactly. It's so sad. It's sad, you know, just to see these young people, uh, you know, saying, oh, my dad, my mom doesn't want me to go out, you know. Then they tend to sneak out and do drugs yeah, yeah. and do all these things. Yeah. And then they come back home, their parents don't do anything. All they do is just look at them, give them attitude and just mm. walk. I'm like, dude, you even have that privilege? Like, Us, like that girl who was us. caught in the club, 13 years old. She was really? in the club. Yeah, yeah. And then people are like, first of all, where are your parents? Yeah. You're 13, what are you How, doing here? What are you here? doing here? Where are your parents? But such and such. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, Doc, um, what, what you've said is... Uh, very truthful. Uh, it's it's something that uh, our elders should have should not be neglecting and should be looking onto. And uh, getting into what uh, uh, I understand, you have a ministry. Um, you have yes. a ministry, and uh, uh, we would love if you could expand uh, or you, if you could tell us more about. Uh, uh, I believe this is talk time ministry. Yeah, if you could uh, talk about it and explain what it is and what you you wish to accomplish? Um, well, uh, the ultimate goal of Talk Time Ministry is to uh, change lives um, and show uh, young people and adults the ways that the enemy, that's what I call Satan, the enemy, is destroying our communities, our homes, our families. Um, I'm not very savvy when it comes to social media, but... Um, I'm getting there. I have a few volunteers that's going to help me with my social media. So you'll be seeing more stuff in the near future. A lot of the stuff that I've done, I've done on other people's platforms, and I haven't been able to transfer uh, those, uh, those, those things to my own social media. So my social media is just um, in the beginning phase, so you'll be seeing more of uh, me on social media. Also... Um, I'll be here at some point in time in Africa. So um, when I do arrive here, um, I plan on hitting the ground running, mm-hmm. and I'm going to get busy with um, what God has called me to be, and that's to be um, a voice mm-hmm. in the wilderness, mm-hmm. a voice when there's not many voices that's willing to stand. So that's what that's my purpose, mm-hmm. and it's all about purpose. Yeah. So when I'm not doing this, I'm not happy. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, things don't go well for me. So, but when I'm doing this, I feel like this is, okay, this is what I need to be doing. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. And there's satisfaction yeah. in um, helping others. Yeah. Um, I, if it wasn't from someone uh, reaching back to assist me, you know, who knows where I would be. So I have to give back. So that's what talk time ministry is about it's about exposing the enemy and giving back to my community okay i've I've got one question Mm -hmm. um do you believe in depression in depression yeah depression yes you do believe in it yes okay because um there's so many people out there that uh okay for me i i do believe i do believe that you can feel depressed, but de- being depressed, it feels like that you are giving too much power to it. You know, so many people, when you ask them to say, okay, why are you not working on yourself? No, I'm depressed. You're depressed, but yeah, 
we are well, you're well built, you know, you're not suffering, you've got a, you've got a good home, why can't you just go out there and just, you know, do something for yourself, you know? So that's the question why I had asked if you believe in depression. Okay, um, I understand um, what you're saying, mm -hmm. but there is a thing called depression. Mm -hmm. So I think we open ourselves up to things like the young people, mm -hmm. open themselves up spiritually, mm -hmm. especially to this music. Um, if um, research has shown that um, kids that listen to a certain type of music, mm -hmm. they're more suicidal mm -hmm. and they're more depressed than other kids that don't. So mm -hmm. that does happen. And then there's this excuse that the younger generation uses. And so that an excuse, oh, I'm depressed. Mm -hmm. I can't. I can't take this test today. So we have a mental health day now that <laughs> kids are taking. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, they'll say, um, um, well, um, I'm, I'm going to take a mental health day, even at work. And I'm like, a mental health day? A uh, mental health day. My, so yeah. they are being taught this. So they are being fed this information. So it's an excuse for them. Yeah. And it's like the, the uh, society has given them reasons and excuses to use for not uh, being productive. Exactly. And, and that's all it is. But there are some cases where if you're listening to this crazy music that's talking about killing, murdering, um, drugs, drugs, you, you're into alcohol, um, you're opening some spiritual doors and you're going to have to deal with some, some uh, you're going to have to deal with some issues. Yeah. So when you open all these doors and listen to this, like in the, in the let me just say this. So in, when they create these albums, when they create this music and, and they go into the, what uh, young people call the lab to create music, yeah. they actually pray and do uh, rituals of, over this music. So they pray to Satan. Right. They do rituals. So this is ritualistic music. So that's why it affects our young people the way it does. Because this is not just music. These people are actually demonic. Mm -hmm. So, uh, y'all gonna get me in trouble here. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> please go on out. So, so an act to be a producer in Hollywood, uh -huh. most of these pr producers are master witches. Yeah. It's, all, it's, it's just, it's nothing but witchcraft. Yeah. The beats, uh, the frequencies, all this stuff, and, and it's designed to destroy. Mm -hmm. And we, have opened a door for that stuff to come into our lives, come into our homes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's it's all entertainment. Mm -hmm. And we think it's fun and fine. But there are some deep, deep, dark secrets out there about this music that we are allowing our children to get a hold of. Mm -hmm. Not just the music, but television. And there's something for each one of us. So uh, violence might affect you. Mm -hmm. Womanizing might affect you. Mm -hmm. Drugs might affect you. Mm -hmm. um, so there's something you don't just listen to a music just to listen to it when you listen to it you are connecting with something in that music mm -hmm. something about that music you're connecting with mm -hmm. and it is it, it is it's almost like um people who practice voodoo and they play the drums and yeah. they, yeah, get, they yeah. get into these trances yeah. and they invoke uh, spirits and stuff. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Holly in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the music industry. Same mm -hmm. thing with television. Mm -hmm. So that's the dark, dark secret. So these are some of the things that I, I, I talk about and I try to expose. So at least I can give people this information. Once you have the information, then it's up to you yeah. to make a, 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 a decision on what you're going to do. Yeah. So now my job is done. I can wipe my hands with it. Um, look, you know, God, I, I, let, I let these people know about it. So now it's their job. It's the parents' job. Mm -hmm. So when you're addicted to, drug, to drugs, mm -hmm. when someone tries to help you, you've really got to want help. Mm -hmm. So it takes the people who are affected by it most to want to do something. You got to have the mindset. Mm -hmm. You got to have the will and desire. And once you get the will and desire, you can overcome almost anything, and, and especially if you got a good support team. Yeah. You know, so, okay. that's true. What, what you said on the music, uh, back then, uh, I remember on YouTube, uh, I think 2012, 13, 14, <clears throat> there were YouTubers making uh, videos talking about uh, how the 
music influences people, how it can make you behave in a certain way, move in a certain way. And they were called, they were called conspiracy theorists back then. It's now that people are starting, some people are starting to catch on like, okay, yeah, you know what? The conspiracy theorists were not so wrong after mm, all. Because mm. look, uh, I've, I've met uh, really ignorant people, uh, sorry to say that, here in Zambia, they'll tell you, oh, no, come on, that beat is just an instrumental made on the computer using Fruity Loops or you know, whatever software they used. Then I was like, okay, look at here. We, we are here in Africa, right? In Zambia, to be precise, where we have witch doctors. They play the drums, like you say. You have all these people dancing in a certain way to invoke a certain type of, we, we say it's an emotion, okay? When everybody's seated, when they start beating on those drums, everybody starts to move. Next thing, there's chanting, there's also, mm -hmm. I was like, but what makes you think musicians don't do that? Because yeah. here is the situation. An artist is, a, a job of an artist is to invoke an emotion from mm -hmm. the consumer, all right? Mm -hmm. To make them connect, to, uh, to, to have that, to be on the same wavelength as the artist was when creating that particular piece of art, right? So I'm, I'm telling these guys, but if, if Africans who, here in Africa, our, our, our traditions have been doing it for thousands of years. So what makes you think somebody in Hollywood wouldn't just wake, wake up, up and, and say like, oh, listen, I found this and this inspiration from a certain tribe mm -hmm. and I did something and it causes A, B, C, D, and people get to move in a certain way. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we've all heard music, uh, like you said, there's music that we could play and would all feel depressed yeah. right now. Like, oh, this is so sad. Mm -hmm. Then there's music that is so uplifting. All of a sudden, you are so excited. So what makes you think these people don't control you in a way, mm -hmm. you know? So... Uh, the conspiracy theorists were not wrong. There is something at play. It's not as easy as people think it is. There is more to it. The enemy is definitely working 24-7 to make sure we are all misled at the end of the day. So mm -hmm. basically music is just another form of a, a drug. Because, uh, it, it, yeah. it is for some people, yes, yes. it is. Mm -hmm. y yes, it, um, like the syncopated beats, it's, this, this goes so deep. But let, let me give you, um, this is the research the research that I looked at was the research that these uh, Fortune 500 companies uh, did. And so this is how they use it. So so we were talking about the Super Bowl earlier. Yeah, yeah. So you watch the Super Bowl, you have millions of people, or, or maybe the World Cup. You have millions of people watching these, these sports events on television. So these companies pay for advertising. So... When you watch one of these events and you see a commercial, mm -hmm. these companies are paying millions of dollars for like a 30-second commercial or 60-second yeah. commercial. Yeah. Why would a company, a successful company, pay so much money for a commercial? Because they know if I can get this before the eyes of millions of people and I can show it to them a couple times, they're more likely to go and purchase that product Mm -hmm. Same thing with movies, same thing with music. Mm -hmm. Then they attach the commercials to the jingles. Mm -hmm. You know that kids learn better yeah. when you put music to the, yeah. the, the curriculum? Yeah. They can, they can learn like that. So because it affects your mind, it affects your, your frontal lobe, it affects your, your subconscious mind and your conscious mind. So it, it's very powerful. It's hypnosis in a way. Yeah, so it, it, it's, it's hypnosis. So especially if you're not like a spiritual kind of person, it's easy for it to invade your mind and your soul and all that. Yes. So um, what are the steps in order to take to help these guys, you know, uh, stay away from such things, pornography, drugs, all those, all those sorts of uh, activities, you know? Um, first, they, they're going to need some help. Mm -hmm. First, they got to want help. But I think it's gonna start with the parent. It's not, if not the parent, because there's mm -hmm. some parents are not stand, stepping up to the plate. Yeah. But I think guys like you, guys like all you guys in here, mm -hmm. y'all. Now that y'all heard this information, y'all, <laughs> you, you know, y'all have a mandate, right? Yeah. Y'all yeah. just can't listen to this information and not do something. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's so, true. cause God, one day He's gonna say, y'all heard Doc Brown. Anybody yeah. who's listening, <laughs> y'all heard? They heard? They hear me, right? Yeah. yeah. 
God gonna say, y'all heard Doc Brown and y'all did nothing to help. Mm -hmm. So we need people that are willing to help mm -hmm. and to direct these young people. Yeah. And we need to um, provide safe environments to where they can get counseling. Mm -hmm. and, and we need to convince them or some kind of way get them to understand how dangerous this social media is that they are exposing themselves to. Mm -hmm. um, but they have to want it first. An mm -hmm. uh, individual, to, in order to correct his behavior, has to want it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to need to change his environment. Mm -hmm. You need to get you some friends that's going to be encouraging mm -hmm. because you need a support group. Yeah. So you need to select friends. You need counselors. Mm -hmm. You know, like you guys all look like counselors to me, all you guys. <laughs> we try. So y'all have y'all have a, a, a certain level of wisdom and understanding. Yeah. And someone looks up to you, all of you guys. Yeah. Even for what you guys are doing here with this podcast, you have people that look up to you. Mm -hmm. Whether they look, they you know maybe they want to be uh, just like you guys in podcasters, but you have influence. How many people are watching us today? Mm. You have you you are you guys already know you have influence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we need people like you. We need parents to get informed. Parents need to be educated on this. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's a big step. Mm -hmm. We need to educate the parents mm -hmm. and, 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 and set up counseling, like I said before. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we can start taking steps mm -hmm. in the right direction because mm -hmm. we need healing. Yeah. We need healing across the land. Okay. You yeah. know, th th that's... that's uh, this is what you said is a very important thing in terms of healing. Given that you are in a country that uh, uh, was declared as a Christian nation, mm -hmm. okay, that was uh, what 1991, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. And we've kind of lived with that type of uh, on that foundation, but to be honest with you, we can slowly see it decaying in the sense that it's, we are just not as strong as we used to be. Mm -hmm. That's because, uh, you know, my grandmother said, you know, the, the, the challenge with your generation is that uh, when we speak about uh, spirituality, we, we call them uh, out of date. Yeah, you're outdated. Come on, this is what people used to think. Mm -hmm. You'll be like, grandma, this is not 1954, you know, but... They are right because they, they can see, like, look, we had problems back in the 50s and the 60s for sure, but not these type of problems exactly. you guys are having. These, these, we never even saw, we never even thought humans in the future, we never thought our children would even have such problems. Mm -hmm. She was talking about, um, I remember we, we were watching TV one once and... Uh, there were these two guys, they, you know, and then she's like, what's going on? I'm like, oh, they're, they're a couple. Wait, that's possible? You know, with grandma, it couldn't compute. She's like, but how do, how do they have, how are they going to have children? You, you know, and I'm like, well, it, it was hard to even explain for her because she's, she's 80 and she, she grew up in a different time and, to explain, I tried to explain, but it, she she just couldn't yeah. process it. She was like, "I'm sorry. Listen, I think don't explain it to me anymore. Yeah. I do, I don't want to listen to it anymore." <laughs> yeah, because I have a question. Yeah. Like, what's your what, what's yeah. your opinion on like what's the what's the go at the end of the day for these entertainment companies? Why are they uh, putting such stuff on TV? Oh, yeah, yeah, for yeah. For kids well, to watch. Like at the end of the like, what's the goal? Yeah. Well, why? Now. <laughs> Facebook is, is, is listening, so you you have to be you have to say it in a cryptic manner. So, right. so yeah. So what what's your take? What's your position? Or where we are uh, you know, when it comes to that particular issue? Well, um, Satan is the ruler of this world and this world system. So he hates us. So he wants to destroy us. People of color in general, but he wants to destroy, destroy anyone that who he, he can destroy. Mm -hmm. But we have been hated for thousands of years mm -hmm. just because of how we look. Mm -hmm. Satan hates us. Mm -hmm. So it's for destruction. That's what he does. 
He came to kill, steal, and destroy. Mm -hmm. So he wants to destroy Zambia. He wants to destroy my community back home. Mm -hmm. He wants to destroy America. That's what he does, and he controls this world system. Mm -hmm. That's why we can't be connected to this world system. Mm -hmm. We can be in this world, but not of this world. We don't have to do what the world say do. We don't have to walk like the world say walk. We don't have to talk like the world say talk. Mm -hmm. We can be in this world, not, but not of this world, and we can walk in a different direction than the world is promoting mm -hmm. us to walk. And so the world is promoting all this stuff. Mm -hmm. the, the getting high, mm -hmm. free sex, mm -hmm. the, the world is promoting. Everything on television mm -hmm. is sexual. Yeah. They teach women how to be, the rap music, TV, teach women how to be highly sexualized. Imagine. And they teach men to go out and conquer as many women as possible that's bringing problems. Mm -hmm. Now it's teaching men, it's making men, um, uh, what's the term I want to use? Uh, hyper -fem feminine. So you yeah. look at the rappers. They, uh, what's it? Little Nas X. X. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Little yeah. Nas X. So, yeah. so, so now we don't went from being a gangster. Now we going to being feminine as yeah. men. Yeah. And then it show a lot of our uh, actors and entertainers. So our men in dresses. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 you know that's the really sad thing about about mm -hmm. social media and or the media in general, is that all these young men that are watching, you know, the Will Smiths, you know, these guys were like the top actors back in the day. You're like, I want to be Will Smith. We used to but look now, up to them back yeah, then. Like, but oh, now he's it so seems manly. that <laughs> he's been mocked and it seems that he's been disrespected as well, you know. So it's really sad to actually see the young generation watching even Netflix movies to say this is how men should behave, you know. And this is why we've got so many men out there that are, Suicide. So many men that are drug addicts. Oh, because this certain type of movie has told you how a man should behave. And you are there seated, ah, yes, this is how a man should behave. Instead of getting all those um, teachings from your parents, from your uncles, from your brothers, but people are actually driving it away and going to social media and Netflix. And it's really sad. Like you said, you know, the rappers, the music is teaching women to be ratchet. Like... How do you, how, how is a lady excited to be ratchet? Like, how is that attractive? Yeah. Even men as well, you're out there saying, I'm slept with 20 women. And this is something that we actually talked about in our previous episode. We were talking about baby daddies. Like, how is it that first one, you complain about baby mamas, but you're the same people who are sleeping around with so many women and you want to come on our platform to say, ah, yo, uh, baby mamas are useless. So meanwhile, you guys are the same people that are actually making those one same dude, baby mamas. Yeah. One, yeah. two, six baby mamas. Yeah. And his yeah. family is struggling to provide for exactly. all the kids. Exactly. Like, Here? Yeah. 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 It's, it's yeah. It's increased. It sounds like America. Come no, on. You got to no, be no. kidding. It, it, it that, that's what increased. I was saying. It's like, look, it's, 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 um, it's slowly creeping in. Mm -hmm. You know? It, yes. It's... Uh, in 10 years... I'm. 10, 15 years, it's a, it's we won't recognize this place yeah. anymore. Yeah. Because you know? be, to be honest, I thought the role of a parent was to recognize the mistakes their previous generation made yeah, so that they can to. rectify them to make sure that the same thing doesn't happen. But like, yeah. like I don't, I don't, like, what do you think is happening? Like, what's in the mind of the parents nowadays to allow their kids to, you know, be exposed to such things? I, I feel uh, th this is a question, uh, uh, Doc Brown, I'll ask you on this one. Uh, somebody once mentioned to say the system has the system has made parents so busy, so that the kids can be unattended to, to a point where look if you're not the one teaching your kids, who is if they are left by themselves? Do do you think that's that's a very genuine statement? I saw on social media somebody make that. That statement is one hundred percent correct. It was actually a, a, a plot. Uh, there was a, I think her name was Margaret Singer okay. in the U.S. in the early 1900s. There was a movement that was financed by the powers that be. I'll just say it like that. And that movement was to, uh, it was called the Women's Right Movement. Mm -hmm. 
uh, it was designed to get women out of the workplace. Now, you got the man in the workplace and you got the woman in the workplace. And um, so what happened, once the women hit the workplace, then, um, you know, prices start going up. So before long, it took two salaries to maintain a household if you wanted the American dream. You yeah. wanted all these things, yeah. which is, is what we, we strive for. So that was a deliberate ploy yeah. to pull women away from the kids. Um, studies show that when a child is born, and if that child stays home with one of the parents, which is typically the mother, they are better nurtured and are better communicators um, than kids being born, both parents going to work, and these kids are being raised in the daycare. Mm. Yeah. And, and so now um, the parents are working, the kids get out of school, mm -hmm. and they go home, what do they do? They watch cartoons. Yeah. They watch these TV shows, yeah. Disney. Yeah. Disney is one of, oh man, the Disney Channel. <laughs> um, yeah. I won't say what I feel about the Disney Channel, but mm -hmm. um, Disney is not good for a lot of young people. True. Especially, mm -hmm. Oh, we, we've just come to learn that, uh, how they've been... Uh, I grew up watching Disney. Many kids grew up on... It's now when you grow up, then you'll be like, oh what my goodness, the hell? they've been brainwashing yeah. us this whole yep. time. Exactly. You know? Because even just the content, at least you would say back then, it had some sort of positivity. But the content... Now. Now. You look at it, especially last year, 2023, oh my goodness. And I believe that <laughs> Disney affected a certain generation back then. Right now, it's just like technology, phones, internet. Yeah. That's yes. what's affecting the generation now. It's like this the people who control these systems or like the enemy, he said, it's strategic. They have like a plan. Okay, in 50 years, this is what we should accomplish. Mm -hmm. And there'll be steps each and every time as we progress. Anyway. So it's, it's, it's mad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, before we actually go far, <laughs> this is a segment where we get to read messages. Wow, time then, is running. Then yeah, you get to advise. Yeah. Okay. You know? So I got a message right here. It says, hi, admin. Uh, hi, my idea. I need guidance or help. I dated this girl. She hurt my feelings not once but multiple times. When I finally gathered my strength and broke up with her, she cursed me saying, it shall not be well with me in my entire life. Now my question is, can this curse work knowing fully well that I didn't do anything to her but just freed myself from being more damaged? Doc Brown. Wow. Curses can only affect you when you are walking in disobedience to God. Mm -hmm. So if you give, if you open a door mm -hmm. for someone to work stuff, it's possible that it can. Mm -hmm. So, but in the safety, in the arms of our Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. Yahshua HaMashiach, nothing can touch you. Yeah. And there's a story I, I, um, that I mentioned um, two days ago mm -hmm. Uh, between King Balak and Balaam, where Balak uh, wanted Balaam, I might have got these names switched up, to curse Israel. Yeah. And he tried, he made several attempts to curse Israel, but he couldn't. He went back to the king and said, look, God won't allow me to curse him. Mm -hmm. And the reason that God didn't allow him Israel to be cursed was because he found no iniquity in them. Mm -hmm. They were living an upright life. Mm -hmm. So if he's out there indulging in all drugs and alcohol and all this stuff, those are doors that are open that you, where you can be attacked um, through some of this spiritual wickedness. That's all it is. That, that girl is practicing spiritual wickedness if that's what she's, she's yeah. trying to do. Yeah. So we have to find safety in Christ. If we find safety in Christ, we'll be okay. No one can touch us. No one can harm us. Mm -hmm. But when we don't have safety in Christ, then we are open for attack. Yeah. Doing and that. sometimes God will attack, uh, allow, well, he'll stop us from being attacked, whether we uh, are worthy of it or not. Because I know I've escaped death on several occasions mm -hmm. and I wasn't worthy. Mm. I was living a rough life. And, but yet I was preserved and now I'm here today to uh, speak to you. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't deserve it. 
Amazing. So, but I always acknowledge God, even when I was living in my field. I always acknowledge Him and I always um, gave Him reverence. Yeah. I say, you know, God, I, I know I'm not living right, but uh, I would pray, please protect me. And, you know, it got so bad with me, um, I couldn't even go to clubs because I was afraid I might go to a club and, you know, I might, some, something might happen to me. Yeah. Then it got so bad that I, I, when I would be traveling and someone else would be driving, I would be riding with them, I was so petrified of accidents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I was a wreck, and, and that's what turned me, that helped me um, turn to the most high and try to walk out a godly lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, but that young man, he needs to find safety in Jesus. Yeah. Yeshua. I don't like saying Jesus. I like saying Yeshua. Yeah. Understandable. That's nice. That's one thing, guy. <sighs> well, first of all, I don't know why. If he didn't... Okay, here's the thing. Uh, I think uh, um, Doc Brown has actually put everything out there that that uh, spiritually that should uh, mm -hmm. should be put out there. Mm -hmm. Then um, I don't know what he did to her for her to just come and put a hex yeah. on him or whatever, curse whatever yeah. is working. Uh, I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's one side of the story for sure. But what I can say is uh, he broke up with her, uh, move on. Try now not to jump into a, a relationship too quickly. Have you made sure you, uh, <laughs> you, uh, you have your friends in check? You have your family in check? You, you have your people around you that you love? Okay? Uh, have you made sure you're working? Are you trying to make a better life for yourself? Because mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, when you just sit there, because for him to write us that, it's been on his mind for quite some time. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like um, at this point, he should let go. Mm -hmm. And uh, if he hasn't been praying like Doc, uh, like, uh, Doc Brown has been saying here, uh, I think he better start. Mm -hmm. We don't know because at the end of the day, uh, I don't know how it is there in the West, but here we'll say it's Africa. You don't know who yeah. this girl's grandma, what she does. She may be... A legend back in the village, you know. She may <laughs> right. be practicing some sort of whatever. So yeah. he, he has to put that in mind. Like she, she just can't say that from without. Yeah, she knows true. something yeah, yeah, somewhere. True. So yeah, he has to be very careful. That's the thing I can say. Laz? Yeah, Doc Brown said it perfectly. Make sure that uh, you, you know, surround yourself with uh, Christianity. Make sure that you have uh, faith in... Uh, and the thing is that uh, he fears her more than he fears God. And that's the mistake. Yeah. That's the mistake he's made. He's actually given her more power using his fear. Mm -hmm. And he needs to understand that at the end of the day, she's just a human being, just like him exactly. as well. So the first thing he needs to do is make sure he prays for her, prays for himself, and make sure he's aware of his spirituality. Yeah, so that's what I would say. Amazing. It's, 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 it's Amazing. So, that's it's a, great. It's a strange <laughs> message we've received. We've I know. Received I, I, like know. That. I was shocked when I heard it. I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> so I uh, have another message. Yeah. It says, Hi, Men's Conference. I had my ID. I just wanted to say thank you so much for the wonderful show you guys are made to help out people like me who really find it hard to come up with great life-changing decisions. Great show, guys. Keep up the great work. I love you all, guys. I just came here with one question. That has been troubling me. I've been dating this girl for a while now, but we always seem to find ourselves arguing about our exes, about her exes. When we have a talk about it, she claims she will stop, but it seems like she's only taking a break. Then after some time, she goes back to that behavior again. I've been with this person for a year and six months now, and I'm slowly losing my trust in her. What should I do now? Because she's now making me feel what I've, what we have is going nowhere. Last time she answered me saying she enjoys talking to her exes after promising she would stop. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I think we can all say wow on that one. It's like, um, <laughs> it's almost like that Verizon... Um, commercial when they say, can you hear me now? Yeah. Can, yeah, yeah. can you hear what she's saying now? Yeah. Uh, so 
she's connected to uh, these exes. Yeah. So that's your sign. That's your message. She's connected, and she's not willing to let them go. Mm -hmm. So you might want to move on. Yeah. Um, I think all of us would agree on that. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Just short. Just yeah. go. Yeah. You got to. You got to um, uh, move on. Uh, as for me, yeah. uh, first of all, uh, I think like he wrote us this message, uh, expecting us to give him a green light. No. Like, like uh, I think he already knows what to do. Yes, he already knows what to do, mm -hmm. but he's just asking to confirm if his, if the decision he's making is fine. Like, mm -hmm. look, my guy, we can never tell you to stick around with that woman. I'm sorry. Look, the more you look, you. One year, six months? Yeah, one year, six months. Yeah, one year, six months. And you guys are still having the same problem. Now imagine how the problems will be if you are with her for the next, I don't know, four years. Mm -hmm. How worse it's going to be. Mm -hmm. So if you like your peace of mind and you don't want to worry about these things anymore, you have to go. You have to let her go. You have to tell her, listen, uh, I don't think you and me want the same things anymore. And mm -hmm. uh, we have different lifestyles. Mm -hmm. I cannot tell you what to do. Yep. It's, not my, it's not my place in the world to uh, parent you. <laughs> At the end of the day, you are, we are both adults. And uh, you go your way, I go my way. But I wish you the best. Simple as pie. The more you stick around, the more things are just going to get worse for you, my guy. Mm -hmm. She's not going to let go. Yeah. It's her choice at the end of the day, not yours. Alas, easiest advice. This one is very easy. Just leave, man. It's and the so thing cool. is, and the thing is that he he lacks the uh, he has the lack of understanding of what kind of choices affected her. Like, let's say now the fact is that he's um, he's, he's he's in a battle with himself right now. Mm -hmm. He's trying to decide whether he should leave or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very easy. Practically, she's been dealing with these exes for how long? I don't know. Maybe it could be like years, yeah. years and all that. Yeah. So meaning she's comparing him to, to the men she's dealt with. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. now, and now he has a... What's the term I'm looking for? It's like... Ish. Lost of it's words, wild. Right? <laughs> it's wild. It's crazy. Yeah, you know, it's crazy. Going, so, you know what? Let's just tell the guy... Just, run! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because there's a word I'm looking for. Uh -huh. Yeah, there's a word uh -huh. I'm looking for. Because uh, imagine if, she, if imagine if they were married right now, yeah. because things would be ten times worse. Yeah, so yeah, so I think the best advice is to just leave. Yeah, yeah. Just you know, for me, uh, the biggest mistake that he's made is he's worshiping her. You know, he he noticed that he noticed the red flags, but he does not want to let her go, or because he's afraid that he'll probably lose himself. And that is one thing that most young men actually face him. Because you're dating this girl, you feel like, oh, I need to pedestalize her. I need to worship her. You know, and forgetting that you as a man, you need to respect yourself. So not respecting himself, that intends for her not to respect him. This is why she continues to do what she's doing right now. So this is what I always keep on saying in every episode. You know, put God first, put second yourself, family, friends, and then her. I'm not saying, I am not saying. <laughs> That's a very I'm not, nice list. I am not saying that you leave her out in the dust whenever she needs help. No is that what I've noticed is that women love it when you're all about God and all about yourself and all about your mission. Because if you are putting her on top, uh, on top there, believe you me, and this is actually uh, news. We had news, was it weeks ago? When we had this uh, former musician who committed suicide yeah, 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 yeah. all that, because he pedestalized his, his, his wife, you know, and forgot about God. He would say nasty things about God. And then pedestalized his wife. And what when what happened? He ended up kidding himself. And which was extremely sad. So as a man, you cannot put yourself in that position where you get to accept anything that happens into a relationship, knowing very well that it ex it's, it is extremely wrong. You know very well that you're supposed to leave, but you want someone to tell you, you know, sit down and talk to her, which is not the case. Yeah, you know? and I, now I remember what I wanted to say. Yeah. yeah. Um, the thing is, is that there are certain choices that affect women that he should be aware of. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say, okay, she's a type of woman who used to deal with all these men. Mm -hmm. So doesn't yeah. that mean that the kind of woman I want, that doesn't exist? Those are questions he didn't ask himself. Mm -hmm. He just accepted her anyhow. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. He doesn't, most men don't pay attention to the quality of women that are, 
you know, roaming around the streets nowadays. Mm -hmm. They just date anything. They just sleep with anyone, anyhow, without asking themselves questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what I think. I think when he got with her, the red flags were there, like you said. He but he just, to ignore them. he just ignored them and just, you know, focused on his emotions Signs and feelings. And probably she kind of like, you know, baited him. Maybe that certain times he wanted to leave, but she kind of like manipulated him, seduced him and all that. Yeah, so... Emotionally, he's weak. That's the reason why you can't leave. Exactly. I, I, I think I'll, I'll say something. Uh, one last thing I'll say. Uh, uh, Doc Brown, you had mentioned uh, uh, how you say that uh, God, even when you don't deserve it, God can still allow you, can, can still save your life from time to time. I believe that's yes. all because he wants you to recognize that he's there. Mm -hmm. you know? Correct. And uh, sometimes... God will let something that... Because there are people who ask, but why would God allow such bad things to happen in my life? Sometimes he will allow them to happen to you. He knows very well they won't kill you, this problem coming your way. I could have stopped it, but I won't. It won't kill you. But I just want you to learn that I'm here. I need you to remember that you have to come back. Mm. So maybe this guy... That's why this uh, particular message landed on this specific episode. That's because maybe God wants him to remember like, yo, you cast me aside and instead of worshipping me, you started worshipping your woman. Then I showed you why you never worship your fellow man. There you have it. So mm -hmm. maybe the guy should start now putting things in check and say like, I think I've been moving in a very peculiar way lately. Mm -hmm. That's the best thing I could actually tell him. Otherwise, my guy, the signs are there. I don't know what you're waiting for. You have to leave. Simple as pie. Yeah. And if you're um, having difficulty leaving um, because you have become one with this woman through sexual contact, um, pray and ask um, God to deliver you from her. And that works. And then don't accept the phone calls. Don't contact her on social media. Just be done with her. Now, maybe a couple years down the road or, or however much time you need, maybe, you know, y'all can, if you see her, you can communicate with her. But you got to purge yourself of her. You just can't leave and think you're going to still be communicating with her. So mm -hmm. just purge yourself of her and move forward. And get focused. Don't let a woman be your focus. Amazing. Wow. Amazing. So, yeah, we're about that. to end the show. And I would love... Uh, any last words from you guys? We'll start from Lars. Okay, let's see. Last words, last words. My last words is that it will be, if you want your woman to respect you or women in general, here are three tips you should know. First off, don't let your emotions override your logical thinking. Women don't respect men who are emotional. They respect men who are logical and disciplined. Mm -hmm. And then number two is that don't quit. Always try your best. Women respect men with drive and ambition. Women don't respect men who are all talk but can't back up what they say. Mm. Then the final one will be, don't be a yes man. Women respect men with boundaries. They don't respect men who care about what other people think. That habit should be left in 2023. Don't bring it in 2024. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. perfect. That's uh, amazing. I for one, uh, let's see. Uh, I had something going on in my head then. I think <laughs> Laz has just erased it. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> the other things I've said before, I've, I think I've said them too much. Yeah. Uh, the best thing I'll say, guys, listen. I think we are in a new year. Maybe you could start a new chapter. Mm -hmm. If last year didn't happen so well for you, mm -hmm. you need to first look what you did last year. Mm -hmm. Look at the mistakes and the steps you made to where you are right now. If you're struggling right now, it simply means yesterday you had made some difficult or maybe rather careless uh, decisions. Maybe you have to reflect, look at them, and uh, see what you can do next. This time, don't make the same mistakes again. You wouldn't want to make the same mistakes over and over. Okay, that's the, it's a boring thing like I've said, it's a little bit cliche at this point, mm. but guys, making the same mistake twice, uh, I would call it insanity. So put yourself in that level and think to yourself, what is it that I can do differently this time? And then maybe you may find what you're looking for. That's the best I can, that's the best I got today. Yeah. Doc Brown? 
Um, I want to say to everyone out there that's listening, if something that was said here today um, really touched you deeply, uh, it's not a coincidence. You were here by divine appointment. And so if this affected you, this is your, 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 your beginning point to, to make change in your life. So take the positive that you, you, you heard here, move forward. If you're on drugs, get some help. If you're having other issues or something that was um, touched on here, seek help. If you have no one to turn to, you got three brothers sitting on this panel right now that you can reach out to. And there's other help out there. So make up in your mind today that my life is not going to um, move forward the way it is and make that change. Reach out and get some help. Amazing. That's beautiful. So what I would say is that this is 2024, guys. You need to be comfortable being in a position where you're uncomfortable. You cannot ride everything with just, oh, it's just life, you know. In order to get better, you need to work hard. You need to not give up. I know life is extremely hard, but at the end of the day, as a man, when a man goes through hardship, just know that something good is going to happen. Always put God first and, put, uh, and, and second, put yourself as well. And always have a brotherhood that will back you up. Most men out there are living a solo life and they do not know what direction to go through, you know, go to. So what you have to do is that sit down, analyze yourself, ask yourself what is it that I'm, I'm meant to be on this, what I'm meant to do on this earth and what I should do. So at the end of the day, as a man, find your path, find your purpose and know, and know what to do. So pray to God and do not give up on yourself. It's as easy as that. So it's been great. It's been fun. It's been amazing. I'm your host, DC. I want to share one thing. Oh, go. okay. Before we um, end, yeah. I, my social media is, is not the way it's going to be in the near future. But if you want to connect with me, if you would go to Talk Time Ministries mm -hmm. on Instagram and Talk Time Ministries on Facebook, mm -hmm. um, I just, you know, uh, been speaking with the media team. So I have some stuff coming that's going to be um, posted on those sites. So you can find me there, leave a message. And I'll be sure to get back with you. Yeah, is, is it okay? Maybe if we could uh, attach links when we pub when we post this video. Yes, yeah, sure. Your, that, your handles, that would be fine. With that'd you? be that'd be great. All right, so guys, uh, just uh, on YouTube, you can go to the description. We will make sure we put those links in the description so that you can find it easier to just click them. We will list them. Okay. I believe that is uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook also. Yes. We'll have all those for you. We'll lay them down for you so that you find it very, very much easy. While uh, you do that, you can follow our um, men's conference link and uh, uh, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Men's Conference Podcast, as well as our Facebook, Instagram. We will list everything down for you. And uh, you can follow uh, Doc Brown. I believe he's got... Uh, so much to tell us, us being young, there are some experiences he's had that we haven't even experienced yet. We are still kids. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it'll, for a change, it's best to listen to somebody much older with much experience to see how the world is going to, how we will navigate this uh, yeah. world we call, I, I don't even D know what I can call it this time now. It's dangerous it's, waters. It's almost man. dystopian at this point. Yeah. But yeah. Do, do I? <laughs> Look that old guys? No, 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 no you I, don't, I mean, you don't. No, no, you, you make me feel like I need to start hitting the gym. I'm too skinny. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you look incredible. Yeah. yeah. So, guys, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube page. That is our men's conference podcast. As easy as that. And follow us on Instagram. Follow us on TikTok. Follow us on Facebook. That is men's conference podcast. Very, very easy. And as usual, like I said, like Doc Brown said, follow his social media handles, which we will list in uh, the description. So this episode was actually brought to you by Bongo Bongo. Make sure to click the link and get to play some awesome games with them and get to win some cash prizes. It's been fun. It's been amazing. We had Lars, that ranting guy, and Doc Brown. Deuces. Deuces. <laughs>